What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Tins, and I am joined alongside my co-hosts, my partners in crime, Derek Ciapala and Nate Green. Let's start it off with you, Derek. Derek, how you doing? It's been a little while. Oh, man. Living the flipping dream. Started uh, School year started, which kind of blows everything up. Phone's buzzing. Both oh, podcasts are like, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not happening. Of course. So, Glad we got time tonight to talk some some Shohei and some Artie and all kinds of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I heard some kids were trying to braid your hair. Yeah, that's all right. Sound like creators. Just a huge difference from going to high school teaching. <laughs> these kids look at you like you're an alien versus <laughs> middle schoolers like, hug me. You know, I want to can I touch your hair? Can I touch your hair? Oh, can I braid it? Goodness. Can I braid it? Everything's different, man. Oh Everything is different. Nate. I don't need to know how you're doing because we talk quite often, but it's I great. It. It's great. You know, very I typical know how he's doing. It's a very yeah. typical angels way to end the season. I'm excited. We got a shot to hit my number playing some good baseball right now. Wait, what's your, sh- what, what number, what shot of a number are you trying to reach? Don't, here? don't get him started. <laughs> don't do it. He was right last year. Exactly. And in terms of losses, right. wins I had the exact yeah. win loss record last year. He is not happy. We have a shot to hit the number again this year if the Angels continue to uh, to stay what? on this roll. So I had him right around 500. 70, you had him 75. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I had him 80 and 82 and 80, I believe. So we got a shot. Unlikely, but it's still possible if they can continue to win some of these games. Dude, there's still like 18 games under 500. I know, but this is the way they do things. They get hot when it doesn't matter, and – it, that's just the way it, it rolls. They don't have enough gas in that lineup. I mean, honestly. They just beat the Yankees with no gas, so. The Yankees have been slumping since the break, man. It's true. It's true. It's so, true, but. Well, guys, we'll get to talking about the Yankees and Angels shortly because we are actually going to talk about that. But first, 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 got to go through it all. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you guys are listening on uh, Spotify, Apple, uh, subscribe if you're watching us here on YouTube as well. Absolutely love what we're doing. Getting close to 350 subscribers on Derek. I don't know if you knew that or not. Absolutely having a blast on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. Um, go ahead, drop a comment if you're on YouTube as well from where you're list- or where you're watching us from. Really actually like to know that because I know we have um, viewers from all over the world. It's a lot of fun to see that. Um, as well as you can go ahead and follow us on all our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up Talking Halos. You can follow myself on Twitter, Jared underscore Tim's, uh, Derek at D C Apollo, and Nate at Nate Green 34. Guys, if you are listening to us on Spotify, Apple, or any of our sister networks, give us one second to pay the bills. But guys, let's go ahead and get this rolling here. Nate, you and I had a discussion ooh, a couple weeks ago. Absolutely got chewed out about uh, Shohei Otani not being the MVP. I told you, Nate, it's you not quite have, over yet. You have him as the MVP. I know. Nate's got a phone right next to him. He actually has a landline as well, Derek, by the way. So, yeah, that's unbelievable. Um, plus, not, plus, plus there. Not professional behavior oh, here. I know. I know. <laughs> um, we talked about it. We did. I, Nate, I told you that this, all, this MVP race was not over yet. If you want to look at fan, Fangrass War, whatever you, you want to look at, the race is still extremely close. Shohei Otani homered two nights ago. We were recording this last night for you guys. Aaron Judge homered as well. So, guys, we need to kind of get this. We need to talk about it again because I think it's a lot closer than Nate's making it out to be. Nate, you had Judge running away with it. At the time, Judge was absolutely lights out. He's kind of cooled down just a little bit. Um, Derek, I want your thoughts on this first. What do you What do you think? It's, it's a two-man race, to be honest. I don't think there's anybody else in this MVP race. It's Judge or Otani. What do you got, Derek? I think. Are you are you hold on, man. Yeah, are you asking me to say, "Hey, this is how it is now," or how it's going to be? If you had a vote right now, right who, now, who would you vote for? I mean, it's it's cl- it's it's a lot closer. Than Nate's Nate Nate had a judge running away with it. And, uh, at, the time, at, the at the time, at the time, he was sure. running away with Dude, it. He's got he fifty home runs, fifty home runs, one hundred and ten RBIs, two ninety four average. Even now, like the judges is having a historic season. Like I didn't look it up, but there is only a handful of guys to ever have a one ninety WRC plus season um, that weren't on steroids, that weren't 
blank that weren't before you know the Babe Ruth era that weren't before so and so. There are only a handful of guys to ever do that. I don't even think Mike Trout has a 190 WRC plus season. Um, to put this in context for what Aaron Judge is doing, however, Shohei Otani is doing something that nobody besides himself last year and not even last year he's having this type of year because he's been better pitching. Um, he's even been very similar of a hitter. I think he ends up being a very similar hitter. It's I, I honestly like. I think it's really, really close. I think it's closer than a lot of people are making it out to be. I think a lot of people have judged, but. It, it, I think you brought up a good point though, Jared. If the, if we are putting an asterisk on the steroid era players and let's just say for fun, the steroid era didn't happen. So Barry Bonds didn't hit 73. McGuire didn't hit as many. Roger Maris's number is the most home runs of all time. Correct. So Aaron judge has a shot to break a record clean he would be the first clean player to break the record of 61 um i wonder how much bigger of a story this would be because everyone's talking about you know Shohei Otani doing things that hasn't been done before how much bigger of a story would this be with Aaron Judge because he's not going to catch Barry Bonds at 73 but if 61 was the number this guy would be on sports center his at bats would be on sports center every single night when's he going to hit the no- on the next one is he going to get to 62 so I, he probably gets a little penalized because of what Bonds, McGuire, and Sosa did. But I just, I'm just curious on like, would that change the way the season goes? Because 61 would be the quote unquote most home runs all time. Well, I, I think that you really kind of, I mean, you got to throw in. I'm looking at last year, okay, for Shohei, and I'm seeing, you know, as the MVP, nine and two, three one eight ERA. Here's the interesting number. He had 23 starts last year. He's got 22 this year, so the numbers are very close. And if you look at his his pitching numbers, they are, in my view, better. He's got more strikeouts. He's got fewer walks. He's given up eight less runs with one game in hand, of course, two innings. Two innings, basically. So eight runs in two innings. Um, he's actually having a better pitching year than people – than he did last year, and then people probably realize. However, he also hit how many home runs last year? He also, the team was more of a contender versus where they are now, which is an absolute train wreck. And 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 here's the thing. When you look at last year for him, and he, he, he had more people with him. Jared Walsh was hitting better. Everybody's hitting better. He had, he had more of a lineup. This year's lineup is hot garbage. And so I, he's, he's not, getting pitched like he was pitched last year. So all that in mind, I think it's I think he's in it. I just look at the fact that judges in New York, they are a contender. And again, like you mentioned that RC plus number is significant. It's and 50 home runs, Hunter, I don't I, I don't see right now how Judge doesn't win. But Jared, I think you have a point. I think it's close than people realize. Just I think it's, it's the last month. How does Shohei and this team perform last month? And because his pitching numbers are already better than last year. And can Shohei get to the amount of innings to be a, a guy that gets put on the leaderboard? He needs 162 innings to be put on the leaderboard, I believe. And he he needs about 34 innings to get on the leaderboard. Can he do that? I think that also will, will bring some – some more votes towards him because if, if you're looking at the hitting and pitching thing and he doesn't qualify as a pitcher uh, in any stats, that's going to take some, some things away from him just because, okay, he did some really good things, but he didn't even qualify for the ERA title. He didn't even qualify for the strikeouts at all, and all those things. So can he throw 34 innings in a month? Absolutely. It just depends on how his, how the off days are structured and when he gets to throw. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you look at it, we got a month left in the season. This is the storyline going down down the stretch here. I think we're going to talk about this probably every every week, just like we're going to talk about Artie Moreno every week. Um, just like we're going to, I mean, just talk. We're going to talk about the off season. Just like I mean, that's this is this is what the storyline is going to be headed down the road. Uh, you look at it this way: he's probably got four four starts left. Would probably be what we're thinking. Uh, I'm, can pulling you get, it I'm pulling the schedule up now. Yeah, I think he's probably got. I, I guess four starts, um, and if he hits. Six more home runs that puts him at what he hit 29 the uh, couple nights. 35. Put him at 35, 35 
home runs on the year with a 135 WRC plus compared to Judge's 190. He's at a 193, I think, right now. Um, Judge has a 7.9 fan graphs war. Shohei Otani combined has a 7.1. I think he's at a 3. Uh, 3.1 on the offensive side of things, a 4.0 on the uh, pitching side of things. So I think it's the first one to nine fan graph war wins. As weird as that sounds, like I, I know that we're spitting out numbers that are really weird, and I apologize about the 13th week old puppy, if you guys can hear him out there. But um, it is, like I said, this is the storyline going down the stretch. Like, who's the AL MVP? I, like, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Derek, I know you're crunching numbers over there. Um, I think he's got about five starts left. Five starts? I mean, I think he can, I think he can qualify. That's what I'm seeing. I think he can qualify. And not only I think he can qualify, I think he has a chance to win the Cy Young Award as well. I know Verlander's been fantastic. Um, Shane McClanahan got hurt tonight. I, I don't know what's up with him. He was shoulder, not happy. He has I, a I, shoulder I impingement. He'll be day-to-day for a little bit. But you also got to remember, Dylan Cease has one, two, been lights out in the second yeah. half. He, yeah. there's a lot of people in, in the Cy Young race. You can you can throw him in there, of course, but Verlander's up there. Cease is up there. McClanahan's up there. He's in there. So there's, there's a bunch he, of guys. He actually, if I'm reading this right, he has a possibility, a small possibility of six starts. Chance to get 15. So I think if you think about it this way, he's getting he, he might have 15 wins this season. He's at 11 right now, if I'm not mistaken. He could get 15 wins and hit 35, 35 home runs. I don't, I don't think it's the win. wins, man. I think it's the innings. I think one. I think Nate's got this. Yeah. I think it's the innings. The innings are a big deal because that's that's going to be a, a big case, especially if you're talking S- Cy Young, Jared. Like the the innings is always going to be talked about when when you rank when you're talking Cy Young. That's fine. And, and I know we're talking MVP as well, but it, both of those numbers are going. Both of those categories are going to want him to throw significantly more innings than 162. Like. The fact that Verlander and Seas could throw near over 200 is like okay, like this is significant. That's 40. So, that's 40 innings more to give up less runs. So I have him, Nate and, and, and uh, Jared. I have him at five starts plus four days. So they, I it wouldn't, I would not surprise me if that. they moved the staff around a little bit with off days in there to get him that sixth start. Yeah. I could I could see that. Like I, said, I mean, re- if he's feeling regard fun. regardless, like he's he probably gets to 160, that 162 mark, so he qualifies. He's gonna have 200 plus strikeouts. He's gonna hit possibly 35 plus home runs. I mean, there's a legit like as good of a season as he had last year. He's been that much better from the pitching side of things this year, and it's it's just unbelievable. Like I know we had that conversation a couple weeks ago, Nate, and we got chewed out for it, and we said that we. You know, Judge, you got chewed out for it. There I apologize. You go. I, I was on the same side, like, it's not over yet, man. Like, there's a lot of baseball left. I actually think, like, like there is a legitimate chance that Otani wins, and there's going to be a lot of upset Yankee fans. But, like, I don't really care about Yankee fans, so. I think the one thing that's lost in this, too, is Aaron Judge is playing center field more than he's playing right field, which I, I don't think it's talked about enough. The fact that he's 30 years old and moving positions, the guy is six foot eight and playing center field at a high level, it's ridiculous. Like, is absolutely ridiculous and we we can talk about the offensive numbers and things like that and you can talk about otani's pitching but the fact that he is playing a premier defensive position and it's moving spots right before free agency i don't think that's talked about enough because he has been an excellent defender in center field Derek, i'll let you finish this out i know we have a lot more to talk about um i right now i i lean towards judge um but i mean that's the numbers i mean it's that's some, I'm sticking to it. I'm boring you probably. No, no, I like it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with it. I like I said. I think the judge has it too. But like, oh, man, dude, it's, it's so close. It's so close. It's, so. it's way closer than it was uh, two weeks, three ago. weeks ago. Three yeah, weeks ago. two, three weeks ago when we talked. Yeah. So, all right, guys. We, if you forgot, if you haven't, you know, listened to anything at all, if you don't know anything about the news, the Angels are possibly still on the possibility of getting sold. Artie Moreno went out and, you know, they said that they're inquiring about selling the angels, Moreno family. Um, Me and Nate gave our initial thoughts. I know Derek wants to elaborate on this. I know we got some interesting comments on, on the Artie front. Um, First off, just want to say this here, the angels and Derek, I'll get you here. The angels aren't where they are now without Artie Moreno. Whether you take that good or you take that bad, 
Like it's, it's gonna be taken it's, both ways. It's, it's an interesting way to word right? that, dude. No, it is. It's gonna be taken both ways. But like, yes, the Angels have been horrendous. You know, like really bad, bad news bears, and I get it. But Artie Moreno is a fantastic businessman and has put them into a spot where they can be bought by a multi I don't multi, care. multi billion. I don't care about that. All I care I know. about is win baseball I know. games. I know he I know. doesn't win baseball. That's fine. Games. That's fine. That's fine. But we said it before. I gotta reiterate it. Artie Moreno is a fantastic businessman and has done great things with the Angels brand in general. I know I'm going to get chewed out about that. He's done a great job by putting his business where it doesn't need to be well, as well. Derek, take it away. Give us, give so, us your thoughts, man. I'm going to I'm gonna do a comparison here, all right? Because I'm sure that there are a few people out there who pay attention to a certain other entertainment brand that out there, and that is WWE. The World Wrestling Entertainment, Vincent Mann, the guy who, who created WrestleMania, built this massive empire, and was known for his great ideas, for his cutting-edge storylines, and so on and so forth, okay? And then they started going to crap. And then he recently, he retired after getting you know caught being naughty, okay? But here's the interesting thing. Ever since he retired... And Triple H took over. WWE has been fantastic. All right, been exciting. They're bringing back wrestlers who should have been released. Their new storylines, so on and so forth. So why, why am I saying that? I go to Artie Moreno. Artie Moreno buys his team. He's cutting edge and how he's how he treats his people. How he, they're winning. He bought a, a team, just won the World Series, and then they proceed to to win for the next decade. They do things differently than the rest of the American League. West, I mean, they, they gave the Yankees a run for their money every year. Um, but a little too hands on, like the Vincent man, a little do, does not really allow his people to do their jobs, which is what Vincent man was doing. And then here we go frustration sets in, and it, the team has stunk since 2015. My point, my final point, that. Art Moreno is 76 years old. Meg Man's like 77. Sometimes you're just around too long. Sometimes you are in charge of something to the point where you become just completely set one way in tunnel vision. And that's with the capital Artie. I think for the first decade he owned this team, he was a great owner who did a lot of great things to bring attention to the franchise, to make them into winners. But at some point, as and again, this was really exposed with the Jock Peterson trade. That wasn't. We all saw it firsthand. We heard rumors, but we saw it firsthand. And I think that, in my view, just kind of from that point over, spoiled everything. It didn't surprise me. It was surprising to a degree, but when you really think about it for about five minutes, the fact that he's selling or is looking at selling does not surprise me at all. If you know the guy's had problems with the stadium project down there. He's had problems with the team winning. He's been questioned. His entire leadership has been questioned. Quite frankly, in hindsight 2020, I'm a little surprised he didn't think about selling sooner. So there's my take. I just see the two guys, Vince McMahon, age 77, R. Moreno, age 76, both guys who were ahead of the game for a while, and now the game caught up to him. I, I like that. I, I'm not big into uh, WrestleMania, WWE, or anything like that. A um, little bit, you know. I thought he was going to go with his, his other sport, honestly. I, I thought he was going to go with Jerry Jones. Jones. Yeah, I, was, like, I thought Jerry Jones. He's the same. Like, he yeah. reminds me of Jerry Jones 2.0. Jerry Jones just doesn't hire GMs. He just kind of is the GM. So that's the only difference to me. But, I mean, Jerry Jones won his Super Bowls early, hasn't been successful lately. And his leadership and all that's called into question with – you know, is he drafting the right guys, this and that. So that's where I thought he was going when he said he was going to do a comparison. But I like the WWE. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I look at it, though, too. Like, Jerry Jones has been, like you said, the GM. He's been on this thing. Ari Moreno was sneakier, man. He would get a he GM, was. and then he just would interfere and interfere. And then you hear all the stories. You read up a little bit on what WWE had been like the last couple of years. And you had the boss of the bag, Vincent Mann, you know, basically that old guy shot him with his racist fist, but every once in a while the creator can do something and, and they build a star here, or they do this. It's the kind of the same concept. And in the end, Art Moreno 
undermine himself, just like the innocent man has undermined himself by not letting his people do what they do. Wrestlers, pro wrestlers, and the writers behind it, they're the ones who do the promos. They were being, they were being stifled. They are being creatively stifled and to the point where they wanted to leave, like a John Moxley. So you look at the Angels and you look at Arden Moreno. I mean, I mean, for crying out loud, the Mets, the flipping Mets right now with Billy Epler running the show there are making a run. We have Billy Epler here, and we saw lots of hope in Billy Epler. And we figure out later on the dude was undermined at every step. And now we have Manazian, and I like a lot of what Manazian has done. And how much has he been undermined? To be fair, Epler does have a blank checkbook. That is the, he's got a blank checkbook. That is the one difference between the Angels and the Mets for Epler, for those people who are – are upset that Epler is winning and wasn't really winning with the Angels. I mean, he can write a check for however much he wants and get any player he wants right now, which is there's which no is such thing as a blank checkbook with the New York Mets. No such thing. They're, they're paying they're paying guys as much as the Dodgers. They have the same payroll for because they're, they're going for it, but they'll go right back to it. That's how that organization runs things. We'll see. I mean, they they've never had an owner. They got new owners. Much but... money. Yeah, he has the most money in baseball ever. We'll see. We'll see. You, you you don't want so with with the angels. Like I said, we're gonna talk about this for for months. It's come until it actually happens. Um, you want somebody that lets people do their job, and that's what Steve Cohen's doing. It feels like to an extent. Yeah. Now, now, what will Steve Cohen do if the Mets don't win this year? Mm-hmm. What will Steve Cohen do if the Mets don't win next year? You know, like then does he turn into the GM? Does he turn into Jerry Jones? Does he turn into Artie Moreno? Like. I don't think that I don't think that happens. I think he's I wouldn't say smarter than those guys, but like he could very well be like, okay, who are the big name free agents? Um, I want this guy and I want this guy and I want like continue and continue and continue. So, but the different how the difference between Steve Cohen, what Steve Cohen would do, and what Artie Moreno is doing is a little bit different because Steve Cohen want is pushing, going, and getting money. Um, by the way, I mentioned this last time. The only two owners that vetoed Steve Cohen. Um, Baltimore. Gaining ownership of the Mets, uh, Baltimore, uh, Steve Elias, I think his name is Matt, Matt, Mark Elias, Matt Elias. I don't know his name is it's um, Elias. Lot. It's Elias though. Um, and Artie Moreno. So tells you something there. They knew he was going to go spin. Artie doesn't want to go do that. Um, besides the point, besides the point, um, I want to take a step back, Derek, you brought up really interesting points about the WWE bringing in um, some old faces. That is the number one thing that I think I am the most excited about i take that back i want to see the angels win um but one of the most excited things i'm i I am excited to see um the angels do is bring back a lot of their former you know jared weavers uh rod crew has been a has been a huge vocal vocal point on social media about the angels and uh already selling the team weaver has been one of those guys that said like i'm not i'm not allowed to back uh adam kennedy david i mean just like the names go on and on chuck finley didn't had never really wanted to be associated with the team it felt like um he's slowly been working his way back i don't know if that has anything to do with Artie or the way he uh the the disney left him or anything like that but uh, it just feels like you know they could do so much better of a job like why is 15 16 and 17 not retired you know like little things like that like 36 not retired it's embarrassing that that jerry weaver has not been honored for for and, what he did in, in anaheim he he took a pay cut he took a hometown it, discount like th- this guy was is the, it already though you know like is is it actually already like we'll I find out it is already we'll, we'll find out for sure you know but like those type of guys for sure like you'd love to see him back like if you had those guys in the house all the time you know like as ambassadors in a sense like he's, weaver's still in the area he's he's a long beach kid he's been he was around forever you know so you know he'd want to be around the stadium as much as he can but i don't think he wants to come back because of certain things you know i think you already so, answered your question by talking about rod crew the yeah, fact rod that rod crew has been so vocal about how much the angels yeah. have been a thorn in his side since Artie marino has taken over it's pick one you get yeah. to be an angel fan or a twins fan you can't be both and he's like i played for both orgs like I, I loved both orgs. Why can't I be here when I want to be? Why can't I be there when I want to be? And I, I think there's one person who's been very vocal about not wanting him in the building, and it's been Artie. So I, I think that the Salmons, the Andersons, the Erstads, the, the Weavers, all the guys that we want to be honored, you don't even have to retire their numbers. Just honor them. Like, 
just just bring him out and tell him thank you. Like, yeah, you brought him out for the 2002 World Series, but that was like a, a team day. They they deserve their own day. The way that they had helped this this group, especially an Erstad or a Salmon or an Anderson or even a Weaver, because these guys were the reason the Angels were good and they were homegrown guys. It it was it was fun. So I, I do think you already answered that question, Jerry. And just to throw something out to you, I mean, probably first two, I forget now, this piece is the last couple years been a blur. Um, but I sat down with CJ Wilson a couple years ago for our podcast and talking with him about his relationship with the franchise, it seemed, and I, I probably, the mistake I made in there, I didn't zero in more. I didn't poke around a little more at it, but I really got the impression like, you know, he wasn't really wandering around. And now I'm not quoting him. That's just the impression I got. And that seems to be the feeling like you guys are, you guys are even kind of profaning that. I think that, that in sports, one of the biggest failures organizations have in terms of public relations is that the Rams had that same problem for years. We may have lost Eric. It- Oh, there he is. He's coming back. St. Louis and pretty much ignore their LA brother. And they made a bigger effort. I was talking the whole time. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, I'll just trust. My point is this, that, you know, the Rams had the same problem. They had issues with it. Um, other franchises. And, and, and once they bring everybody back, everybody's like, yes, yes. They're all back. They're all they're all in, and it makes a huge difference with fan with fan um, relations. It make, it matters, and so, uh, you know. But also another thing too is, and I think we've talked about it. Like, let's just say Stan Kroenke buys the Angels, or Steve Ballmer. It'd be interesting. I know that's something that Jared and I would be super excited about. I'm sure you would be excited as well, Derek. Ooh. Derek. We're losing you on. We're, we're, oh, we're losing. We're losing Derek on the Wi Fi. by the Angels. I don't know what to tell you. So no, let, me, good. let me just, just, if you get me, you get me, you don't, you don't. Okay. Um, but with the Rams and Kroenke, Kroenke has always been to the salary cap. I think that all of a sudden this the op or maybe beyond luxury tax, everything changes if you get a guy like that. There, done. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, look what the Rams did. Uh, you, you look at what you look at, you look at what the, I mean, we talked about it already the Clippers, you look at what the Clippers have done. You look at what everybody does. And I, I, I don't know. It's tough. It's, it really is tough right now to, to talk about the angels. Um, I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. It's really interesting. Again, like I said, we're going to talk about this at least once a week moving forward down the, down the stretch here. Um, and we'll kind of see where, where it rolls. Nate, you got any final thoughts before we let everybody go? Um, I was just going to say for, for the angels to be put in a really good spot long-term, I think already needs to sell his team ASAP. We cannot wait until June, July, August of next year. Cause by that time you're probably not spending money and Shohei Otani will already have his mind made up that he does not want to return. And the angels probably aren't going to be the team to trade him because it's going to be one of those things where it's like, Hey, we don't want to be that guy. So this needs to be done quickly. So Otani can either stay or go, but we want the new guy to have a say in this. We don't want Artie to basically make, make his mind up for the new guy. Yeah, absolutely. So again, talking about this, like on a weekly basis, me, it, I think we all discuss this off the record a lot. So we'll bring those thoughts onto the show. Um, as always, want to thank you all so much for listening and watching this podcast here at Talking Halos. Again, making us the best Angels podcast out there. Uh, if you could go ahead and subscribe wherever you are listening and watching, leave us a review. Tell us what we can do better. Tell us how we can improve. We really do appreciate it. Um, if you could go ahead and follow us on all of our social medias, you can follow myself on Twitter at Jared underscore Tim's, Derek at DC Apollo, and Nate at Nate Green34. Guys, thank you so much for listening and watching, and have a great rest of your day. Thank mm-hmm. you.